Yeah. Oh, Ivy Pips, a fellow patron. Is he stream sniping? No, I don't think so. Well, <laughs> the Annihilate does look a little sus, but I'm sure he's just doing his own sets. One. <laughs> hey everyone, I hope you're doing well and the season's treating you really well so far in the climb. I personally have struggled a little bit figuring out this Great League meta, this rotation, but uh, I was like, you know what? I'm tired of running into Gligar, Shadow Gligar, non-Shadow Gligar. Uh, they're pretty much on a lot of teams, if not most teams. Uh, and so I said, I'm just going to bring a triple Strondo uh, into a Gligar team. And it worked out quite well. Uh, so I was running a Shadow Lone Sand Slash with a Mana Buzz and Mantine. All three Pokemon have a lot of play into the Gligar. Uh, of course, Gligar is so strong that it actually has a lot of play back into these three. Um, but overall, the team helped me gain a lot of ELO out of that veteran rank, uh, approaching to that expert as well. So I'm going to show you two back-to-back -back sets on how I ran this team. And uh, yeah, let's get into it. Before we get into the battles, I want to give a big shout out and thank you to all my patrons who've been supporting my content creation. If you'd like private one-on-one -on -one coaching, scrims against me, some of my lead guides and strategies ahead of time, or even tune into my live stream battles, feel free to sign up through the Patreon link down below. We catch a Charger Bug League in this first game, which is obviously fantastic for us. Um, I find that most typically bait with the Exorcer, but um, so I think I still shield this one. Yeah, this is this is I think the first set I was using this team in. Uh, I'll show you two back-to-back -back sets. Um, but funny enough, it seemed like a lot of them stopped baiting uh, uh, after I start shielding. So, um, but yeah, so they go for a discharge at that point in time. Uh, Lone Sansa is not amazing into charge bug, but it's not too bad. Uh, they do let it go though, which is fantastic for my backline. We'll see what they come in with, uh, you know, if it's not too bad. Yeah, so it ends up being Feralgator. Um, my backline is pretty strong to Feralgator. Uh, resisting the Shadow Claw on the uh, Manda Buzz and then resisting Hydro Cannon on the Mantine. And we pull out the uh, uh, Whiskash, which is pretty nice. I'm surprised they actually didn't come in Whiskash into the Alone Sand Slash. Either way, Alone Sand Slash, even though Down Shield still has uh, a decent amount of energy remaining and still does decent into these two backline Pokemon. I do have the Mantine as well, which walls off the Whiskash moveset. I'm pretty much no Whiskash running Blizzard these days. So uh, it makes my life a lot easier with that. I'm actually going to hard pivot over to the Mantine. Even if they debuff me, it's fine. They end up throwing Mud Bomb, which is even better. And then I am running the Ice Beam moveset if you didn't catch it earlier in the video. Uh, Ice Beam just much better in my opinion. It's better against opposing flyers, um, better against dragons. Water Pulse is okay. It just doesn't really do much for me, in my opinion, especially for this team. Um, I just didn't really find it that meaningful to have. Water Pulse is not a terrible move, though. Um, I think it's the same exact energy as Ice Beam. It uh, does a little bit more damage. So it's actually not too bad in neutral situations, but I like the Ice Beam for opposing Flyers and stuff like that. All right. We got a Skeldurge. Terrible lead. Absolutely terrible. But they stay in for whatever reason. Um, I'm just going to save my shields uh, because my guess is they're a little bit soft to this mana buzz. I might shield this one because I'm pretty much at the next Dark Pulse. So we'll see what they do. Um, they actually come in double, which is something you don't really see uh, super often. My mana buzz is pretty bulky though, so uh, you do, I do survive the Body Slam. This is pretty rough for me, all things considered. Um, so I just hard pivot over to my Mantine, which... Again, it's kind of my only remaining check for the Skeldurge. But I'm going to shield the Potential Wild Charge, which we end up doing, which is fantastic for me. Um, switch timers are pretty misaligned at this point in time. Uh, I don't know what they had in the back. I can't remember. It's been a hot second since I've done this battle. Oh, Annihilate. Yeah. Uh, the backline team is actually very strong to Annihilate as well. So another reason why I like it. Uh, both kind of really shut down uh, Annihilate uh, teams. Obviously, Annihilate in the lead is a different story. Uh, they just completely let everything go, which makes sense. Um, I'm just going to go straight Aerial Ace uh, because I don't even have the Water Pulse. And, oh, oh my goodness. All right. Cranberry's out of here. They do throw a move, though. Ends up being Shadow Ball. So, but we have energy on the Man Bus. Yeah, so it worked out. Um, yeah, you can see the Incinerate really chunks down that Alone Sand Slash, but 
attack line is just a little bit too strong. All right, we get a Noctowl, a little throwback blast from the past. Uh, don't see this super often these days. And I try to catch a Shadow Ball. Did we do it though? Was a question. Yeah, we did. So really nice stuff there. Um, you can try to go for the catch. You can throw Ice Punch in this swap. Uh, there's a couple of different ways to play it out. I mean, backline's pretty decent into this as well. Again, the Ice Beam on the Mana Bus uh, on the Man Team's pretty nice. The main thing is you don't want the Lone Sand Slash to go down strictly, uh, strictly to the Noctowl because the Lone Sand Slash you might need later for Electric types or something else in the back, right? Noctowl. Lantern used to be a very popular core, and if they're running Noctowl, it's always a potential. Um, and now I'm gonna come in with Lone Sand Slash uh, because timers are misaligned quite a bit at this point, and I still have a ton to play into the Noctowl. They actually throw a move on Noctowl, which is super interesting, and they come in with it, which makes me think, okay, Lone Sand Slash is even more useful than I think it is. Uh, I get a little greedy here and farm a little bit too much energy, but I have a ton still to throw. So we're gonna throw it. I don't think the ice punch. Oh, yeah, it does take it out. Oh, they have the Gligar, <laughs> right? And this is where you see Gligar doesn't really have a lot of places to go. Back to back ice punch, and they're thinking they're in the clear once they take out the Solon Sand Slash. But we got the Mantine in the back, and Ice Beam on the Mantine also really really nice in this situation. I don't think Water Pulse actually one shots the Gligar from this range. But ice Beam, it sure does. Uh, but yeah, if you're tired of seeing Gligar like I am. Uh, I mean, Gligar is a really strong Pokemon, right? So don't get me wrong. I think I understand why a lot of people are using it. But me personally, I was struggling dealing with it. And yeah. All right. Um, so in this matchup against the uh, Frogator, I was trying to potentially catch a Hydro Cannon. You could also just swap out right away, which might be a better play. Um, because a lot of times the Frogator might throw when you get to the drill run. They might throw before you get to the drill run. So it's a little bit awkward to time at times. Uh, so you kind of have to read your opponent on how well they know counts, maybe. If they don't know the counts as much, they might just throw the Hydro Cannon right away. We do draw the Lantern, which is quite nice. And we actually take it out. So they just give up Switch for whatever reason. Uh, I'm okay with that. Um, obviously, they might have like a, I don't know, like a Nihilate in the back or something. Uh, but we get to another Dark Pulse, which is huge for me. And I think they don't... Yeah, they do Shield. Okay. Uh, and then we bring the Man Team. Uh, Ice Beam is neutral for sure. So is um, Crunch. But I think they threw a blind Hydro Cannon. I'm not even sure. This looks like another Hydro Cannon too. So I'm pretty comfortable not shielding. Oh, it ends up being a Crunch. Yeah, I knew it wasn't an Ice Beam. But yeah, so typically they have uh, some type of neutral move. It's Hydro Cannon plus something. Um, I go for the <laughs> combo play. But they have an Altari in the back. So Altari really have nowhere to go too. Uh, quite interesting. But worked out quite well for me. All right. Alone's uh, Witch Cash. Not a great lead. Um, we get the... Skarmory, which Skarmory is typically you would think a not terrible matchup for the Lone Sand Slash. But the problem is Alone Sand Slash is kind of frail, and then the Steel Wing is neutral. So really quite chunks, especially if they start throwing Brave Bird. Um, do I go for the Switch Advantage? Yeah, I think I do. Yeah, and they go for the Brave Bird. I'm completely maxed out energy, so that Snarl was useless. Definitely not a good play on my end. Um, but is what it is. Uh, they come in Gligar. Okay. So... Uh, this is really good for me, um, mainly because, like, you know, my Manti has a ton of play into his back line, and then they shield, which is really, really nice. It gets another aerial ice, too, which is super nice here. Um, so the Manti has a ton of play in this back end. Uh, we don't, unfortunately, get to the move. Do I go for a peekaboo here? Oh, I do. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, in my mind, I think that makes sense, right? They're, they have to throw a dig right away. We get the peekaboo play. We catch the dig. And yeah, there we go. 5-0 on the first set, me running this team. Uh, felt really, really strong. As I said, you know, I was in the vet range, and this was helping me climb out of it pretty nicely. This is a very subsequent set. Uh, so a little slow on the counter swap there, but uh, Mantine, you definitely want to come into Polyrath with Mantine because uh, Polyrath actually beats Mana Buzz shields up. Yeah, so Man uh, Polyrath is kind of beastly in that regard. But Mantine in a pretty good spot. And then also on top of that, they can't really come in Gligar into this. I mean, they could try, but they're going to have to eat an Ice Beam. Uh, so I'm going to go straight for the Ice Beam. If I could grab a shield from them, fantastic. If I take them out, even better. But they're down a shield and they don't have switch advantage. And like I usually say, in that situation, you usually shot out of luck. But let's see what they have in the back. Uh, ends up being a Frothorn. And this is pretty good for me. Uh, Mandibus is pretty strong into this as well. Uh, I think I'm going to try to go for a catch. Yeah, I just let this go. 
Um, unless it's like Thunder or um, what do you call it? Flash Cannon, I'm fine. And ends up being just a Power Web. I'm gonna shield a potential Thunder. Ends up being Flash Cannon. I just know that the Gligar doesn't really have too much to hit me with. So we have a ton of energy now on the Mana Buzz. We have energy stored on the Lone Sand Slash. Uh, yeah, it's pretty much over um, for the opponent right here. I'm just gonna go straight for a Dark Pulse. No need to bait. I have the Ice Punch ready. This next Dark Pulse is gonna take him out. They realize it and they're out of here. Yeah, a lot of people are going to realize that when they run uh, Gligar into this team. This is a very important matchup. So you get to the draw run at the same time they get to the Hydra Cannon. So what's important is you get to the Ice Punch one Shadow Claw sooner. And every Empoleon I've faced in the lead always shields his first bait. So now what happens is you are now a turn ahead or a Shadow Claw ahead, two turns ahead. And he gets to draw run before they get to the next move. And they double shield. So now they're completely out of shields. And I bring in the Mana Buzz to potentially catch energy. Mana is pretty good into this as well if they stay in. Um, and uh, looks like they're staying in for a reason. So this is pretty much a huge threat for my man team. Completely gone. And then now they come in uh, Whimsicott, which not something you see very often. Um, it's actually not that good into Mana Buzz. Um, and you'll see real quick why. Uh, obviously, if you start shielding, uh, you have the Aerial Ace. And yes, they have Fairy Wind, super effective. But Fairy Wind is essentially a Mudshot clone, except Fairy Typing. And you know Mudshot does no damage even when it's super effective. Now I'm just going to swap over. This is their final Pokemon left. Like, let's just see what they got. Sorry, my camera filled up on storage. So it might be a little choppy right here. But they come in Gudra to try to close it out. Uh, fantastic for the man team because we still have the Ice Beam. Uh, here and then we're also able to catch the C bomb, which is the less effective move against the Mantine. Yeah, this is just over, unfortunately, for them. Uh, oh, they still have Empoleon with a little bit of health, but we saw the Mana Buzz. Gudra, in my opinion, is a little bit underwhelming in Great League, um, but you know, uh, for some people, it might work. All right, we face a Nightlip in the lead, and it's met by Bastion. The moment I saw this, I figured it was probably Jason's team. Uh, he's one of the first people to hit Legend. Uh, I think he streams occasionally, but he runs a lot of Bastion teams. Arguably, maybe more than me. Um, but he has a Nihilate Bastion Dugon team, uh, which I've seen quite a few times uh, leading up to this, even when I was running different teams. So, yeah, assuming that's the case, it's going to be a little bit on the tougher end for sure. I mean, obviously, a Nihilate in the lead, even if it wasn't a Dugon in the back, they probably have some type of anti flyer. Um, so. Not a great situation, and unfortunately I had to shield the double super effective flamethrower as well, so that's not ideal. And they actually come in with the Nihilate, so this gives me a little bit window of opportunity. I'm not going to shield anything at this point, um, especially if it's a Dugong in the back. My Alone Sansa actually has a decent amount of play into both that and the Bastion. I'm down a shield though, which is not great, but um, because I'm just getting hit by Night Slash, it's fine. I actually believe there was a Reddit post about this. I didn't read it, but some people sent me um, links to it. And I think it was this specific trainer battling me. Logos Prime, I think uh, I did a, um, what's that called? Uh, a critique corner on some of his battles, I believe, in the past. Um, so, comes in and a really great catch by him. Uh, unfortunate for me because double resisted Ice Punch not going to go anywhere. I'm already down shields, so it's not great. I definitely have to bait these shields away or do something. We do get a bait here, but the problem is he could easily bait me as well, um, and which he does, right? Because I kind of have to shield this. Maybe I had to call the Icy Wind to have a chance, um, but I think just him catching the Ice Punch already just made my odds really, really low at that point. Drill one's going to connect, going to take me out, and unfortunately just not enough. So that was a tough one, but we do take our first loss using this team. Uh, pretty hard counter throughout though, so uh, all things considered, uh, not too bad. And Empoleon, again, the way I play it out is I just go for the baits. Maybe don't bait as much after this video comes out if you think people are going to expect it. But like I said, every Empoleon shields. And then now you always outpace to the second move. They're so one away. They finally get to Hydrokin. You just throw this. You swap on Mana Buzz. Save the Lone Sand Slash. Save your final shield. And even if it's a Hydro Cannon, no big deal. Um, so we catch some of that energy. And then they do a great swap into Cresselia, but... Honestly, like catching a Dark Pulse on Crusade is not really ideal, <laughs> if I were to uh, be frank here. All right, so they're charging up. Moonbot's going to do quite a bit, so I'm going to shield. Their shield's down, so I just want to get rid of this Cresselia. Even though Mantis not Macy into Empoleon at that health range, uh, especially on a Shadow Empoleon, it's not uh, too bad. I was trying to swap out, as you can see there. I do barely swap out. Um, I, maybe I should just throw the Aerial Ace. I don't know. Well, let's see what they come in with. Uh, they come back in with the 
Empoleon. So I'm going to save the energy. I don't know if that's a great idea to shield and save my energy with the Mandibus with so low health. But I'm hoping that my man team could just sweep the back end either way. Uh, we haven't seen the third Pokemon yet. Um, so yeah, these drill packs are really adding up. Oh, and there it is. Gligar. I, I'm telling you, if you face Gligar, you're chilling, right? You think you're about to lose. Here comes Gligar. I mean, I pretty much have like no Pokemon left at that point. But still have to come, uh, come away with it just because Gligar really just has nowhere to go against the team. Glare and Stompfist is not easy to beat but it's also on the more frail end i'm trying to catch an earthquake unfortunately not able to so we're just gonna hit by a bunch of rock slides uh however mana is pretty bulky the resisted mud shots are not doing that much and i still have a shield advantage so not terrible uh mantine's not amazing into Gly uh glaring stunfist either but again it's also fairly bulky so you could tank the rock slides even though super effective not too terribly here and then this is really good They've locked in their Altaria. Our timers are super misaligned. I'm trying to get out of there as soon as possible. I do. I don't even have to spend a shield, which is fantastic. So this is really good for me, all things considered. Uh, they do go for the Moonblast. Um, I think I'm just going to overfarm as much as possible. I got a little greedy there. So I'm just going to have to uh, spend a shield, unfortunately, on Sky Attack. A little bit less efficient, but we at least have a ton of energy banked. I think the better play is I just throw a little bit sooner. And then they come in Glaring Sumphis. Okay. Uh, we're gonna throw the drill run. Uh, what's the play here? Yeah, unfortunately, they get off the rock side before me. I know there's not gonna be a one HP KO, so I should be able to get the dark pulse off, which I do. And let's see what they have in the back. Oh, we get the aerial ace off too. Even better. Yeah, this is fantastic. Is it Gligar in the back? Double fly in the back? Oh, no, it's not. But it's a superior, so all things considered, that's not too bad. We're just gonna go double aerial ace at this point too, because one ice beam's not enough. It's going to do more damage than Aerial Ace, but two Aerial Aces to play for sure. And yeah, wow, weird Pokemon for sure. I mean, you don't see Glitter Stumpfist or Superior that often, but uh, going a little anti-meta, which sometimes can pay off too. Um, but yeah, definitely gave our team a little bit of struggle. But as you can see, a 4-1 right after a 5-0, subsequent set, 9-1 to kick things off. You can see I'm climbing quite a bit with the team, and overall it was a lot of fun to play. And yeah, we didn't really lose to any Gligar. I did end up losing to a Gligar here or there. But the opponents had to play really, really well to pull that off, uh, just because this team is super hostile to Gligar. Thank you all for watching. Best of luck on your climb, too. I've been using a slightly different team recently as well, so be on the lookout for that. Um, but decided to switch things up a little bit. This team is still very, very strong because Gligar is still everywhere in the meta. So definitely give it a shot. And if you do, let me know how it goes. We still have a whole week of Great League left in this current rotation so feel free to give it a shot if you like this video feel free to give a like and share subscribe for future content hit that notification bell to get alerted right when i post a new video and i'll catch you all next time bye